So it's my great pleasure now to welcome Professor Jackie Close. Jackie is a geriatrician and, and co-chair and one of the founders of the ANZ Hip Fracture Registry. And she's going to speak to us about 10 years in 10 minutes. Actually, before that, I neglected to mention that this session is being recorded for webcasts and podca podcasts the day. Thank you. Thanks very much, Catherine. Is there any chance the light could be a little less bright? <laughs> um, so good morning, everybody. It really is nice to be face to face and talking to people. Um, again, we have certainly missed being able to interact uh, at a human level for the last uh, couple of years. I'm literally going to show you a series of pictures. You don't need to take any notes. There'll be no real new learning. Um, but it's really just to, to get people up to speed as to where we have come from and on journey to trying to improve hip fracture care for, for Gordon, but, but for everybody that comes through our doors across Australia and New Zealand. And, and hopefully over the course of the day, you will see that we are making progress. I have no conflicts of interest. So this is 2011. This is the first time we ever came together as a group of predominantly clinicians, all with a view that hip fracture care in Australia and New Zealand was not as good as it could be and that we should be doing something about it. So it wasn't the setting up of the registry at that particular point in time, it was a group of like-minded clinicians who felt we could be doing better. That did lead to the setting up of the hip fracture registry steering group and that occurred in 2012. At the same time as setting up the Hip Fracture Registry Steering Group and agreeing to go on a journey, a long journey, um, three hospitals started piloting data in 2012. We used the minimum common data set that was set up through the um, uh, Fragility Fracture Network. Um, we were aware of all the work that went on the registry, particularly in the UK, and learned an awful lot from the way that they had gone down their journey. Um, so we were able to share an awful lot of uh, information from that perspective. So three hospitals, Concord Hospital, Prince of Wales and Liverpool, have been on board on this journey for the past um, 10 years small amounts of information being collected by enthusiastic um, individuals, again, driven by that desire to improve hip fracture care. Now, we can't do this on the smell of an oily rag, and we were able to get some money from the Bupa Health Foundation in 2012, and that was important. That was an important step for us because it allowed us to be able to employ staff so we set out on a journey wanting some guidelines, clinical care standards, and then a registry that could measure um, quality indicators. But all of that would take time, energy, and, uh, and manpower. So that was actually, it was a $400,000. It was just a one-off um, injection of cash, but it did allow us to get up and running. So it was an important um, grant to have got at that particular point in time. And there's the original um, steering group, um, and you can see at the back there, um, Ian Harris was my co-chair at that particular um, point in time. 2013 is a year of my life that I will never get back. That was the guidelines year. Thankfully, we had somebody called Leslie Gillespie, who, now Leslie has done lots of work with Cochrane, and she is, and I mean it in the nicest way possible, a pedant. And that is exactly what you need for guidelines. We had, so we used the existing national uh, NICE guidelines from the UK. We used a methodology called ADAPT to adapt it to the Australian New Zealand context. But we were told very clearly that if we wanted national clinical care standards, we had to have an NHMRC endorsed guideline. Um, so we had to review many, many papers. So Leslie would send me home most evenings with quite a lot of work um, to do and at weekends. But it was worth it in the end. So the guideline came out in 2014. Not one member of that steering group believed that the guideline was going to be what would change practice. We believed that it was about data and using data to drive practice. But we would not get clinical care standards and buy-in from the jurisdictions um, in this country and also in New Zealand without, without an NHMRC-endorsed guideline. So that was a, a big step forward for us. 
2015, so we had um, interacted very collaboratively with the Australian Commission for Safety and Quality in Healthcare. So that's an organisation in this country that has carriage of all the clinical care standards. Um, on this particular occasion, and I don't know that it's happened since, um, the Commission also worked with the equivalent in New Zealand. So everything that the registry has done to date and hopefully will do in the future has been Australia and New Zealand working in partnership. And so the Commission worked with their, their equivalent organisation in, uh, in New Zealand and we had input into the expert working group um, that was responsible for producing the recommendations for the clinical care standards. So the clinical care standards were produced in 2016 and at that stage we produced our first patient level report. So we'd already been collecting data at a facility level but our first patient level report came out in 2016 and we launched that report in partnership with the commission who launched their clinical care standard at the same time. So again, that was a big step forward for us. Over the years, we've had successes. So we were fortunate enough to be awarded an Australian Research um, Award in 2017 for the work of the registry at a time when we hadn't really been able to demonstrate um, an improvement in practice, but, but the whole concept of setting up registries and, and trying to improve care was rewarded. The hip festivals um, have certainly been a great hit. Um, of course, we haven't been able to do them for the last couple of years but we have thoroughly enjoyed going across the country, um, joining the states, bringing together people to share their learnings, share the pain, share the gains, um, and learning from each other. So, so hip festivals have been a really, really good source of learning for, for all of us, and, and we've certainly enjoyed um, coming to them. There you are, Catherine, you are there up in uh, Brisbane a couple of years ago. <laughs> Um, that pesky little virus um, that's still around um, put pay to hip festivals. So this is the first time we've met for, uh, for two and a half um, years. New Zealand were luckier in terms of their periods of lockdown. So there's pictures of Sarah and Nicola still being able to host hip festivals in New Zealand. Uh, we had to uh, accommodate our learnings via the Zoom platform, which most of us are sick of now. The registry has evolved over time and we absolutely have moved from this just being an annual report that comes out once a year that people flick through and do nothing about. The whole idea of the registry is that you have access to your data real time and you use that data in real time to drive quality improvement initiatives. So this was an important step forward in terms of having the live um, da uh, dashboard. So this happened to be Prince of Wales, but that's because it's where I work. Um, I can see at any point in time, so when I downloaded this slide, it was the 27th of September, I can see how many records are in there for this year. I can see our times in ED, our times to surgery. So Stephen, you can see that if you came to the Prince of Wales, Gordon would not have been waiting five days for his surgery, and I don't think he would wait five days in any hospital now in Australia and New Zealand, thankfully. Um, and then down the bottom, the quality um, standards. So at any point in time, we can see how we are performing. We've had somebody younger come on board um, in order to drag us into the modern um, world. So we've had Neve Ramsey, who has set up our podcast um, series called Hipcast. So if you haven't already listened to Hipcast, please do download it. I think as of yesterday, there was just over 5,000 um, downloads for, uh, for Hipcast, so please do um, download it. Um, we've also got a presence on uh, LinkedIn and Twitter, and of course, we'll be actively tweeting um, today. Um, as always, we have fantastic people, and that's what makes the registry. It's, it's the people that are driven to, to want to improve care. Elizabeth um, Armstrong was our original um, registry manager. She stepped down from that role last year, and, and Jamie Helen on the right has taken over that, ro that role. Both have been fantastic individuals, and ironically, whilst Elizabeth has stepped down from her role, she's still with us in the registry doing some work around consumer involvement. Likewise, Ian was with us for the first 10 years of the uh, journey. Um, Ian stood down from his role at the end of last year and Catherine has stepped up into that role and it's great to be working with Catherine, of course. 
highlight, of course, is the Golden Hip. Um, the Golden Hip came from Scotland um, originally. Ireland also have a Golden Hip. We awarded our first Golden Hip um, last year, and the uh, top 10 performing hospitals in Australia were announced by the Minister for Health, who was then Greg Hunt. Of course, we've got a change of government um, now. And so the top performing hospital in Australia last year was the Princess Alexandra, and it was North Shore in um, New Zealand. So both happy teams to have taken away the golden hip. We've now produced our seventh report, 93 hospitals on board. This year we're doing important work and really it's a reflection of some of Stephen's story. So whilst the technical aspects of what we do is pretty robust, our interactions with patients and families, etc., cetera, um, still needs work. Um, and so the My Hip, My Voice work you'll hear about later on this afternoon, but it's very much about engaging and understanding hip fracture care from the consumer um, perspective. All our indicators are predominantly about processes and outcomes from a clinical perspective. We really do need to give thought as to what the experience is like from an older person's perspective and their family. We will be announcing the 2022 winner for the Golden Hip. The Golden Hips are sitting over there. Um, the Commission, the Australian Commission, produced these Golden Hips um, for us. We will have two awards this year. So we will have the top performing hospital against the national standards. But actually what we also want to do for a registry is actually to reward hospitals that are actually improving significantly. So they're not up in the top 10 necessarily, but they have made substantial improvement over the last year. So we felt it was important to, to reward improvement, not just whoever's at the top. That's 10 years in 10 minutes. Um, there's the latest um, invention. It's the ANZ hip fracture biscuit. Um, <laughs> And all top performing hospitals will be sent a box of biscuits. I believe that they are being sent. They haven't been sent yet. We can't send them because the top performing hospital doesn't get the blue logo. It gets gold logo. <laughs> so there you are, 10 years and 10 minutes. <laughs>